Siren, siren, siren? No, not those kind of sirens, this kind of siren. Today we are doing Siren Head. I do like to challenge myself. He is the creation of the genius Trevor Henderson, who is a horror artist who goes by the name of Slimy Swamp Ghost on Twitter. Check him out, he's amazing. Now, Siren Head is one of the new breed of internet urban legends alongside such characters as Slenderman and Jeff the Killer. And according to his Wikipedia fan page, he is a tall, mysterious humanoid creature known for his odd appearance and the various sounds that echo out of his head. As his name suggests, his head is a pair of sirens with mouths that he uses to kill any victims that are unfortunate enough to cross him. So as we go through the tutorial, I will give you little snippets and facts about Siren Head as we go along. But for now, please subscribe for more weirdness like this and let's get straight into the tutorial. Now the first thing we're going to do is to sculpt the sirens, which are the most recognisable part of Siren Head, obviously, as the name suggests. Now in his information it did say he had a pair of sirens on his head, but I have found loads of different images of him, sometimes with two sirens, sometimes with more than two, so I decided to do three. Anyway, for the sirens I am using this kind of Oasis floral foam. It's really, really ultra lightweight and it's really easy to sculpt. You can sculpt it with a spoon as you can see me doing here. So I just use a variety of things to sculpt it including this spoon and a knife and just some normal sculpting tools like you would use with clay. Another great thing about this floral foam is it's ultra cheap. I picked these up at Hobbycraft and I think they're about £1.25 each. Um, anyway, so you just carve out the ends just to make that sort of mouth shape at the end of the siren and then just carve grooves in because Siren Head basically has this kind of dried up, gnarly, corpse-like skin covering his sirens. Once you've got your groove shapes in place, you just want to sand them with some very fine sandpaper just to round them out. Now you must make sure you wear a mask when you're using this stuff because it does give off a lot of dust. But I'm sure everybody's got plenty of masks lying around at the moment for obvious reasons. Once you finish sanding, you just want to seal the outside of the sirens with some watered down PVA glue. This stops the dust coming off and just makes it a lot easier to paint. sculpting the pole that was going to go on top of my bold cap and then I decided that actually it was way too big so I went with a different solution further down the line but it did look a bit like a doner kebab. Now to further intensify that look of that kind of gnarly dried up corpse skin I just went in with some cotton wool and latex just in thin strips and just kind of spread that out over the sirens and just left them to dry. It was however at this point that I realised I kind of made a bit of an error. His sirens are actually meant to be metal with the skin over and I kind of sculpted the whole thing to look organic but I made it work, I made it work. In a lot of the depictions, Siren Head has got this long twisty tongue coming out of his mouth, so I just created that with some silk clay, which is a bit like Crayola Model Magic for those of you who can't get silk clay. Again, very lightweight, again very cheap, just really easy to work with, so you can just see what I'm doing here, so I'll just let you watch. the teeth out of good old polymorph plastic you've seen me use this plenty of times before if you are a fan of my channel and it's basically just pellets that you put into very hot water and it melts down and you can mold it into all sorts of different things and it's brilliant for teeth so I just press the teeth into the floral foam because with the floral foam being so soft this is very easy to do and then I just sealed them in place with some liquid latex Siren 
Robin Hood is often depicted with long, pointy, creepy fingers, so I just took some very long nails and covered them with latex and cotton wool to mimic that dried skin effect. And now we're onto the painting. So I just painted the insides of the mouth red, and then I'm just painting any areas of that kind of gnarly skin with sort of yellowy browny tones so it looks like a corpse. Now earlier on I promised you some siren head facts so here we go. The first sighting of siren head occurred in 1966 when a family on vacation in Arizona desert captured an image of siren head in a graveyard. Ooh. Incidentally I painted the tongue with <laughs> Yeah. I painted the tongue with acrylic paint and for some reason lost the footage, but yeah, I'm sure you can paint a tongue. I just used different, different tones of reds and pinks and purples. And then I just covered it with some varnish, nail varnish in this case, just to give it a shine. I'm also creating some sort of areas of like rusty metal on the sirens as well with sort of greys and whites. Now the inside of the mouth was not looking quite the right texture because the floral foam just didn't lend itself to the inside of a mouth. So I put some latex and cotton wool on and just kind of sculpted it a little bit with my tools just to make it look more like the inside of a mouth. Now in total there have been nine reported sightings of Siren Head, all by victims that have managed to escape from him. Now as you can see I'm just painting the insides of those mouths now that it's all dry, just using different shades of pinks and purples, much the same as the colours I use for the tongue actually, so even though we lost the tongue footage you can see what colours I used by seeing what I used here. Ancient rock paintings of Siren Head have been found all over the continent of North America which indicates the Siren Head is not actually a new species on Earth. There have also been sightings of creatures that resemble Siren Head but they lack similar features. Now as you can see I'm just adding some brown just to add some more rusted effect like I mentioned earlier both on the actual sirens themselves and on the nails. And let's go in with another siren head fact. So, for example, going back to what I said about the similar looking creatures, a photo of siren head got leaked where siren head appears to have the head of a street light. It looks like siren head is trying to blend in with the other street lights, so it's very possible that he has the ability to transform into various structures. This would obviously come in handy when he's trying to lure his victims. Now once you're happy with your paint job on the mouths and on the nails and the actual sirens themselves, you want to just make sure you paint the teeth a nice lovely yellow shade because I don't think Siren Head will be brushing his teeth very much. Once all that paint's dry, it's time to stick in the tongue. I did this with some latex and cotton wool. However, I did find I had to prop it up while it dried because it did keep kind of sagging. And ain't nobody got time for a sagging tongue. Yeah, see what I mean? There it goes again. <sighs> I just propped it up with a sponge. Now it's time to recreate that pole. I just painted a toilet roll and cut the ends like you see here and glued it to the top of the bold cap. Now it's time to assemble your siren head. So what you want to do is just tack your bold cap onto either a head cast or if you don't have one of those, one of those polystyrene heads will do. And then simply just start sticking all your pieces in place with some hot glue. Now the main part of the face will be done with a mask. So I just cut some bigger mouth and nose holes so I could breathe. And then I just put the, 
the mask in place and just glued it to the bold cap as you can see here. This will be painted and textured to create the illusion that it's the rest of the pole, although obviously your face is going to be wider than a toilet roll, so you have to kind of use a little bit of artistic license here. Anyway, I did find that once I glued everything in place, I did have to add a little bit of latex and cotton wool just to firm everything up and also to blend it into the bold cap so you don't have any sudden edges. Don't know why I've got a shot of the tongue there drying. That's obviously a bit of an error in editing, so let's just ignore that, shall we? And I also use that latex and cotton wool just to further recreate those dried skin effects that you saw earlier. Oh, and incidentally, while that's drying, don't just leave it like I did. Prop it up so that it doesn't just flop like that. And you can also use a hairdryer to speed things up. Right, we are now onto the final steps of our assembly and I'm just gluing some string and also putting some cotton wool onto that mask just to take away that shiny mask texture and make it more in keeping with the rest of the look. Right, while we're doing that, let's give another siren head fact. Right, powers and abilities. Mimicry. He has the ability to release the sound of news broadcasts, human conversations, sirens and screams. One report claims that Siren Head was able to kill a group of people by mimic mimicking their friends' voices. Naughty Siren Head. Here you can see me using just more latex and cotton wool just to firm up those structures even more. I also painted some PVA glue over those structures just so that they dried really, really firm and hard. And there you see me propping them up while they dry. Right, another Siren Head fact for you. It is believed that Siren Head is extremely powerful due to his size. He's huge, basically. Siren Head is able to break down trees or various heavy, heavy object, objects whenever he wants. Why was that word so hard to say? Anyway, once your siren head is completely dry, it will take overnight with the PVA glue because the PVA glue does take a while. You want to paint the whole structure black as a base. I use acrylic paint on the mask and the toilet roll area and then I used face paint on the bold cap because face paint will stretch with the bold cap when you're putting it on, whereas acrylic paint will just crack. And then I used some yellowy toned acrylic paint and just started basically mimicking the colours on the sirens. And we are now basically on the home stretch. Once we've done all this painting, it's time to leave it to dry and then we're on to application. There have been a lot of steps to this one, but I was pretty pleased with how it turned out. It wasn't 100% there, but it was almost there. Anyway, I'm not naked, incidentally. I do have a boob tube on, but um, I just thought it looked quite funny because I looked naked. Anyway, paint the areas on your face black that will show through the mask, and also paint your chest and neck area black as well, because we will be body painting these later to look like Siren Head. Although, if you were going to wear this costume out I would recommend maybe wearing an all-in-one bodysuit or something like that you can actually get Simon head bodysuits on the likes of Amazon and eBay now I'm just applying the mask and the bold cap using a little bit of hairspray just to keep those wispy hairs back and then just gluing everything in place before we start blending so while we're doing that let's have another siren head fact shall we in one sighting of Siren Head, a couple reported that Siren Head can be super fast. The couple were driving home until they saw the graveyard. They ended up checking out the graveyard where they saw Siren Head, but according to the woman, Siren Head started running at them at an extreme rate of speed. Oh, he's fast, he's strong, he's big. He's not somebody you want to come across, really, is he? Anyway, we are now just blending in our skin with the mask. So we're just going over any areas of skin that you can see with some black body paint and then just going in with some yellowy brownie tone body paint and some white body paint just to start painting in that gnarly kind of corpse like skin all over our neck and chest and just all over that mask just to make sure everything's nicely blended in.
Now we've got time for one more siren head fact. Some say that siren head is a stronger moving relative of trees, which is the reason why siren head can blend inside of a forest or behind a tree. He can stay motionless for days at a time to blend in with his surroundings. Ooh. Trevor, who is the creator, also, also mentioned that Siren Head makes no sound whilst moving, saying he can be almost completely silent. So you will never know when Siren Head is around. He can blend into his surroundings. He can stay silent. So just make sure you are keeping your eyes wide open. Anyway, the very last bit of this tutorial is just covering that one eye and the mouth with just some muslin now the good thing about muslin is you can breathe through it so it covers areas but you can breathe through it and you can actually see through it so i just covered up the areas with some patches of muslin and some latex and then just painted them to blend in my face further just so that it doesn't look so much like a mask like i said this is never going to be perfect because simon head looks nothing like a human being but i think we did a pretty good job so yeah so there we go, there is the completed siren head. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this. It was a rather ambitious project. It's one I've wanted to do for ages and yeah, I just decided that, you know, what the hell, I was going to give it a go. So let me know if you liked it. Let me know if you would have done anything differently. And I hope you're all having a good Halloween week. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the like button because the algorithm is not liking me very much at the moment. And that will really, really help me out. And it's free. It won't hurt your finger. So hit that like button or the dislike button. You know, it's a free world. And I shall see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.